So the question is not, how can I get done everything? Because it's not possible. The question is more, how can I get the highest priorities done? And you do that by prioritizing things, right? And then things fall off your desk and that's totally fine. But you know that these are the things that are least important. Hello out there and welcome to our weekly Ask the CEO Q&A session here at the Virtual Frontier. This week we are going to discover what is behind the drop servicing business model and how you can use it the best way. Questions that might arise around these topics and that we are going to talk about are why should you consider the drop servicing business model in the first place, how quality is assured in this process, what are the differences between the drop servicing business model and outsourcing, and of course also let's get to the possible benefits. See you in just a flash on the other side. So, hello, man. Welcome to a new session here at the Virtual Frontier. Uh, I hope you, I found uh, you this week like really relaxed and uh, um, yeah, in your center, uh, as our topic is today, uh, overwork and stress related, uh, stress uh, related to work. Um, this uh, seems to be a really a hot topic as many business owners are really struggling with a uh, immense uh, workload. And um, yeah, we want to discover today a little bit what, uh, what maybe you are doing about it and what advice we can uh, give. But um, yeah, first to get this off, when did you felt uh, last time uh, stressed and overworked and what you did particular in this situation? <laughs> Good question. So the answer is yesterday, but just for an hour, because I am I think I'm currently already really good in understanding that I'm stressed while back in, I don't know, 2012 till 2018, I, from from my perspective and my knowledge, Today, I would say I was stressed all day, every day without even realizing it. And that's the mm. dangerous thing. So now it's like if I'm sitting in the home office, right, and I try to do some focus deep work and then my son is crying and that, that's just in the background, it, it creates stress, right? Or in another word, I create stress out of that situation because it's not that stress is there. There is just a lot of things going on and then you have no focus anymore. And you do one thing, but you think that you should do another thing. And this is how stress is created. So I realized that pretty fast. Meanwhile, and then I can act accordingly. And I'm very, very happy and grateful that I can do so. Because, yeah, I know how, it's, how it can be differently. Mm. Mm. You just mentioned this uh, being between the different tasks and things you do. And uh, you feel that you should do uh, probably in this uh, instead mm -hmm. of. Um, so. There's always uh, this notion to be, especially for business owners and entrepreneurs, like to be in, on top of everything. And um, why why is it so important to be prepared, like having like the state of mind, uh, or thinking about the future, um, but having like the tasks in mind that you that you really need to do uh, to get to the future point of whatever state it is. I think you should never think about the future unless you create a plan how to get there. And when you have a plan, then you should just focus on executing the plan and don't think about the future. Always just think about what you're doing right now in this moment and nothing else. And if mm. you stop doing that, then you can reflect in, in if, if what you did really helped you get where you want to be. For example, you want to, you set the goal, you want to have 500,000 euro cash on the bank, right? You can create a plan and the plan, of course, is always wrong, but at least you know some direction where you go to and then you take action according to your plan. And then for every step you look, if this was effective, if it put you further into the direction of getting 500K on your bank account or not. Yes. And then this, this continuously reflecting if what you did and the action you took was effective and moved you further towards your goal. This is very important. But when you do one thing and you are not certain if this is the right thing you do, and then while doing it, you constantly think about something else and you are struggling if this is the right thing or maybe not or maybe you should do something differently and that 
totally sorry fucks your brain because you you are never it it's like ping pong constantly in your brain bong 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 and that that creates the stress and the more things you juggle in your brain the more stressed you get and you see that by when when you just look or observe yourself how you work and i can guarantee that 90% of people listening to this uh, conversation they suffer from this one thing so they try to do something on their laptop and then there pops up a slack message and then there is an email and then someone calls them on the phone and then someone knocks on the door and then they check messages on whatsapp etc and the, the the real bad thing about this is that they always allow this distraction. Look at all the tabs you have opened. Do you have Slack open? Of course. Do you have your phone loud? Of course. Because you believe, you think that you need to be available all the time. And then, of course, people get used to it and they expect that you are always available. And in the end, you are just driven by others. You are just reacting. You are not acting on your own agenda. You are not even following your own goals unless your goal is to please everyone and just to react to circumstances. Right? And then... What makes it even worse is that you train your brain to behave like this. And this results in that you are not even able to focus anymore. Because when you try to focus on one thing, your brain gets bored so fast and you feel that you need to do something else. Like, oh, quickly check an email, quickly check WhatsApp, quickly check LinkedIn, quickly check if my phone is running because no one was calling me in the last 15 minutes and all that <laughs> stuff. Right? Quickly check in an email. When, when I just think about it, it I, I get stressed because I know how it is when, I, when it was back like four years ago. And the beauty of working digitally is that you can switch off that interruptions. You can be in total silence. But most people, they are so afraid of this silence and switching off all these communication channels that they think the world will go down if they switch it off for 15 minutes or an hour. No. And I think that is a dangerous habit that people develop that causes more and more stress on the workplace every day. Also, also affecting the attention span that you just described, like having all this uh, different devices, software apps running all the time yes. and notifying you about uh, mostly uh, nonsense or not, not time critical things, let's uh, put it like that. Um, yeah, but they make it time critical. Otherwise, no one would react, yeah. right? I mean, this, this, uh, Social media is designed to catch your attention. And then the content that is shown there is designed to catch your attention. All the headlines are designed to catch your attention and make you curious. So it's hard to resist because they are made and they do this really well. So mm, the only yeah. effective thing to avoid distraction is to remove the distraction. And I think it starts already with like having for, for in the first step, like respecting your own time like really well if you if you want that others respect your time that you people that you work with your family whatever um you should be like respectful on your own with for first in the first place with your own time and energy you have uh, available so um that would be a good step to just get rid of all the notifications yeah. if i mean that's really needed that's a hamster wheel like if you if you are a business owner and you show up every day being totally stressed can't focus jumping from one thing to another, why you might feel important and that your busyness is a sign of progress, which is absolutely not the case, then mm -hmm. other people like your clients and your team members, on the one side, they see that you behave like this and they mirror you because you are the leader. So they adapt their behavior to like have the same wrong behavior. And then your entire organization is just jumping around like a headless chicken and no one else is able to focus anymore. And this mm. won't get you any progress, right? And then your clients, they expect that you reply within five minutes after they send an email. And that makes you even harder to change that because you don't want to disappoint people. So that's really, that's an endless hamster wheel that if you, if that turns faster every year because digitization just speeds that up. And if you don't realize it and you continue like this for years, I can guarantee you end up in burnout. Yeah. And that's also the reason why no software app, whatever, will help you to, to reduce stress. Uh, it, it, it's the other way around, right? Yes. <laughs> how, how, how can I um, get rid of all this, this bullshit jobs and, and uh, tasks that are not really necessary, but they're so, somewhere around me? So uh, how, how I get rid of them and, and uh, probably um, put measures into that they are not coming back or disappear for good? <laughs> 
Okay, that's a big question and it depends on the situation you are currently in. Let's say you are a service provider and you see yourself as a classical service provider, like an agency, a consultant, a freelancer, a coach, whoever, right? And if you worked in the past, you might have developed the belief set that you have to be available for everyone whenever they want something from you. And that's the classical understanding of a service provider. Now, today, these people can request something from you faster than ever because they have direct access to your attention by email, by Slack, by WhatsApp, by telephone, by whatever you react to. Right. So if you are in that situation, I would just start introducing time boxes of one hour and then like 20 minute communication time boxes and really get good in following these time boxes. Be th this is how you become the owner of your own time again. When you plan your time in the calendar, just the boxes, not the content, not yet. Just the time boxes, reserve one hour focus time and then in this one hour switch everything off. Everything, throw your phone somewhere, switch off all communication channels like Slack and email And you will see how hard that is, but that's the start, right? That's like an addiction and you need to get rid of that stuff because this is the root cause of getting stressed. And once you have your time boxes and you came good in following these time boxes, then you fill your time boxes with regular content. For example, if you want to build a business, you should have at least four, six, better eight hours of time reserved per week to care about growing your business. And I say growing your business because I don't mean doing work in your business. I mean, looking at your sales numbers and creating strategies to win new clients, for example, using online funnels, or look at the quality of your service delivery and try to improve that systematically, not just by you doing it better, but you need to build up a system with assets and workflows that your team can execute and deliver the quality you want. And This will move yourself out from the day-to-day -day hamster wheel of constantly reacting to like other people's agenda. So that's what, what I would do in the first place, really become the boss of your own time again by introducing time boxes and radically, radically stick to it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I will have maybe a, another question about the time boxing um, uh, later on. But um, I, I'm wondering how, how do you orchestrate like... Um, your tasks there may be tasks you really like to do uh, work you really like to do and other things that you just have mm -hmm. to do like how you prior prioritize between them what you say okay this i do first or probably i don't or i leave that for something so, something or someone uh, or some time or someone else yeah. uh, to do work on yeah the question is why do you have to do these tasks i think you don't have to it's a choice you decide that it's important for you but over time you develop the belief set that you have to but this is not true you decide to do it and you decide to do it because someone is like um, complaining all the time and you want to get rid of that so it's your choice that you don't want this person that um, like stalks you all the time and pushes you all the time that's why you prefer to do this task and maybe you you prefer i don't know responding to all emails because you have the belief set that that you need to be fast in replying to these people as they depend on you or whatever your story behind that is, right? And that, that's why you do that. That's your why. And when you, when you prioritize, no matter if your why is because it's fun or because I believe I have to because of any reason, you should always have that priorities very clear ordered somewhere. It can be on paper and pen. It can be in a Trello board or any other task management tool. But you want to make sure that you have different columns with different topics like marketing, sales, and whatever you need to care about. And then you put in all the tasks that come in. You'd never react to them immediately. You put them into this board. And then at least I do it that way on Friday in the evening. I reprioritize every column. So I reprioritize what is most important in sales, what is most important in strategy, in leading my team, and other topics. And then when I start on Monday with my first deep dive or deep work time box, And that time box has the label marketing. Then I just take the most important thing in marketing and I do it. And I consciously decide that now this is not fun time, but it's time to move marketing forward and to do the one task that is most important to move the needle in the marketing. So I mm. do that, right? And then, of course, if I like to have fun, I add also a fun box somewhere, a fun time box. That's when you like do your hobbies, do sports, whatever's fun for you. Right, but it, this is this is important. That's why you do a plan and then you commit to the plan and then you do it without negotiating with yourself anymore. 
while doing the plan, you can negotiate how much fun time you want to have and put it there and then stick to it. This is the only way how, to, how you can develop a habit of constantly performing and delivering without getting stressed out. Yeah. There, there are a lot of business owners and, and I hear it all the time, like they, they have this notion that they have to be like all over the place and uh, be in, involved in everything because without the business owner, nothing is uh, really uh, going on and working on. So, but this, this is the pressure that uh, all, also the business owner is like under, right? They're, they're like feeling this all the time. They say, wow, uh, I have this, uh, I have to be there and I have to answer that. And we ju you, you just mentioned that some, some solutions about that. But how I, how I get rid of this uh, notion that I have to be all over the place? I think you. So why are these people behaving like this? And I think it's because they got used to it. And why did they get used to it? I think because they got a rewarding feeling by being busy. Because when they are busy, I think they confuse it with being productive and important. And very often people confirm that from the outside, saying, "Hey, you are so busy. Wow, you are so successful. You are whatever because you." are all over the place and everyone needs you all the time. So they get this external validation and the reward. And that's why they got used to this behavior. So changing that is really important. You need to like, yeah, as I said, you need to create a plan and then commit to it and maybe have someone to keep you accountable on this plan. And then have these this, this time boxes and become the boss of your own time. This is the most important thing. And you know, there is always, especially, and it's not only for business owners. It's also for managers. It's also for employees. It's for everyone because digitization speeds these things up. And most importantly, there is always more work than there is time available. So that's a mm. fact. You cannot have, mm, you cannot set the, the standard that all day, every day, you need to finish the day with all work done. If this is your expectation, There is no day whenever you can be successful. You will never be able to accomplish that. So the question is not, how can I get done everything? Because it's not possible. The question is more, how can I get the highest priorities done? And you do that by prioritizing things, right? And then things fall off your desk and that's totally fine. But you know that these are the things that are least important while you cared about the other things that are most important. And that is good because that moves you forward. And what is important and what not is important, this is what you decide. This is what you do while prioritizing. And that also requires time and focus and attention. So you reserve one hour to reprioritize. And while doing that again and again and again and again and getting used to it, in the same way as you got used to the other habit, you will get really good at it. And then all of a sudden your habit changed and then it's autopilot and it's normal. But you have to start. Yeah. Best is yeah. today. Yeah. As you are talking about the time boxing, uh, um, to follow up on that a little bit more, what when I do time boxing the right way, why why will time boxing really help me to get more free time, free up time in, in my daily life? And um, yeah, what are um, the most important things to keep my time boxing up and running? So this is not just a one-time setup. And I think you already mentioned some, some details about that. Maybe we can elaborate a little bit more on that. Yeah, it's a constant reprioritization, right? Your time boxes, they should stay like as they are. I would not change them so often. But what you do in the time boxes, that varies and changes every day. And you sometimes might not be able to stick to your time boxes. And that's also okay. But then you reorganize them in your calendar and then you see the effect of not sticking to your time box. And then you know what falls off the desk. And if you prioritize that again, then it's okay because you, you work according to your priorities. I think this is, this is a dynamic system with a constant that you are the only person, the really only person that has access to your time. And how you can get more free time by that is simple, just by putting a time box in your calendar that you have free time, right? And then other people, as you don't answer the phone, and like I never answer the phone unless it's my family, um, and you never react to emails and like messages immediately, just like within all four hours, for example, if every four hours you have a time box that is communication, you check emails and communication somewhere else. Then you become the boss of your own time and you, you decide when you have free time and when you do what. And 
most importantly, you are very reliably available for others when you send them a booking link to your calendar where they can book a free slot. And if it's not free, then it's not free, but it's my time. I decide about my time, not someone else. But when it's free and I keep enough free space in my calendar so that my clients and employees, they can book a meeting with me, then they can just like book it in my calendar. And I'm there like clockwork. I'm 100% reliably available as I only work according to my calendar, right? And when I decide to have free time, put that in the calendar, it's blocked. No one else can interrupt me. It's my time. And that's the best gift you can ever get. And mm-hmm. it's your choice to, to, to get there, right? No one else can give this to you. Talking about uh, free, free time and uh, taking time off, uh, I'm struggling with like taking time off uh, from work and uh, doing stuff. Uh, but why, why is it so essential and uh, how can I get better there? Yeah, because for everything you need a pause. If you do sport and you want to regenerate and gain, I don't know, muscle or whatever you want to accomplish, you need to give your body time to regenerate. And the same is for your brain. You cannot be always on. There is nothing in the world that is always on. It starts with day and night cycles, right? <laughs> it's, it's up and down. It's on and off. And your body, your brain, everything works like this. If you never allow yourself to be off and you are not off, if you take this phone and constantly scroll in social media and stuff, you are your your brain is driven by what you see here by all these catchy headlines and yeah if you are not off then there will be there will be a point in time when your body tells you now you go off and unfortunately i see this with friends and business partners that then go off and they go off terribly i can tell you i never expected that this can be so hard mm. How is it that, um, and that also is my, my last question from my side, um, that a sense of gratitude, uh, uh, gratitude in, uh, for what you work and um, the people that you're working with uh, can help you to be more relaxed and less stressful? Yeah, I mean, if you feel gratitude for what you are doing and if you enjoy what you are doing and if you like it and if you see a sense, then you keep on doing it and you don't uh, get tempted to think about something else that you think you should do more urgently because what you're doing, you like it, you're grateful for that. So, And if you do work with a good feeling of, of gratitude, for example, then it's, it's better for, because it's, if you have gratitude, if you feel gratitude, you cannot feel stress, right? So if you focus on feeling gratitude and you can get that by being very focused, and appreciating that you have the work, you can do the work, and you have a great team and great clients and all that stuff. And then you cannot be stressed. So it's the enemy of stress. Gratitude is the enemy of stress. And stress, like, kills. It makes you sick. It kills performance. So, yeah, I think this is an important thing. And what also can help, by the way, is meditation, as you asked me how to, how to control your thoughts, because this is what you want to do. If you If you have all these thoughts, and most importantly, if you react to them all the time, right? And then if your thoughts come in by the purpose and intention of others that send you messages, they control your thoughts. And if your actions are controlled by your thought, then you are controllable by everyone that puts something into your like attention, right? So controlling your own so- thoughts and your reaction to these thoughts, I think that's crucial to become um, the owner of your habits, your behavior, and your time. And I think meditation is a good thing to get there. Awesome. Well, I think we covered it uh, um, regarding the topic of stress and uh, how to reduce it at uh, uh, work. Um, thank you very much for your time and see you next week on our next Q&A session. And if you are interested in learning more about this deep work and prioritization, etc., we put a link below the show notes to the Flash Focus Framework which is yep. exactly about that. So that's the cool. fast lane. Manu, take it all and uh, see you next week. Thank you. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. We hope you found this session helpful. Head back to our in blog article on why drop servicing business model is exactly what you're looking for. Did we miss something in this conversation? How can we do better so you'll get more value out of our content? Let us know in the comments and reviews below how you get the balance right between delivering projects and work on time with quality but without overspending. We love to read and respond to your comments. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, give it a thumb up and share the session around with your friends and colleagues so they can take advantage of this content too. 
Sign up for the free business builder training on flashup.io and learn more about how to scale with your business at any time. Work with global top talents and make work better. On behalf of the team here at the Virtual Frontier, I want to thank you for listening. And as always, remember, keep exploring new frontiers. Thank you.